So you want to change your gel polish color. You have two choices. Well, I guess three. One's a bad way. You can soak it off, you can file it off, or you can peel it off. Don't peel it off. <laughs> I'm going to show you in this video how to soak it off. I hate it, but I'm going to show you. Let's get started. So you have your gel polish on. You've let's say you've worn it for a couple of weeks and you've got to now get it off. We have a couple of choices. You can go to the salon and get them to take it off and they'll either do it two ways or you can even do it two ways. One of those ways is to file it. When I have my clients come into the salon, I file it off. We can whip it off with the proper bits and with the proper skills that you know how to use an e-file, you can whip it off pretty fast. But not everybody is going to want to file it off. And the reason why you don't want to is if you applied gel polish to your natural nail, you want that to be taken off gently. Now, some skilled nail technicians can just whip it off with an e-file. But if you're not skilled at that, or if you don't have the e-file, then you might not, but you want to soak it off. There's a few tips I can help you to soak it off a little bit easier. So what you need though is pure acetone. When you're removing gel polish off of your natural nails or even fake nails, you have to use the acetone like this. So I brought a bowl because I'm gonna put, well, I'm gonna loosen this first. Loosen this a little because this is acetone and I'm gonna heat it up a little bit with some warm water. I'm not gonna heat it up by shoving it in the microwave. That would be very, very bad. But I'm gonna loosen the lid a little because I just don't want it to expand at all in there with the hot water. So I'm gonna pour some hot water in here. Okay, and I'm going to place the acetone in here to heat it up. So before we get into the acetone, we're gonna let that warm up a little bit. And just before that, you wanna get yourself a good file. These are one of my files. And you wanna buff the surface of the gel. What we're trying to do is break the seal on the surface so the acetone can penetrate through the gel and start to soften it. If that doesn't happen, the gel's not gonna break down. Okay, so I just want to buff the surface of the gel and that should be kind of hot enough now. And I'm going to cut this little pad in half. And now I'm going to grab some warmed up acid. You don't have to warm this up, you guys, but I live in Canada. It's really cold right now and my room is cold. So I just wanted to make it a little bit warmer so it, it actually feels really good. So I'm going to take it out of there right now because it's quite warm. And I'm just going to soak this little pad and I'm going to lay it on the nail. Just make sure that the acetone soaks into that. And I've cut up some little pieces. I just got a piece of tin foil, and I've cut up some little pieces and I'm going to wrap it around the nail and just sort of tuck it in. That's what I do. Now, the idea is you want to sit and let this soak in for 10 minutes. This is where I lose my patience. By this time I've done all this, I could file these off, but I am working with acrylic, so it's very easy to file off an acrylic and you will not damage the natural nail. Here's a little inside professional tip. When you are applying your gel polish, I always try to think ahead about the removal process is thinking ahead. When I file that gel polish off, I do take a chance of filing it down too close to the natural nail. So in preparation for that, I will put two or maybe even three, if the person has sensitive nail beds, I do sometimes, I'll put two coats of the base coat before I put the color on. That way, when you file the color off, you file down to your base coat and it gives you a little wiggle room not to file right into the natural nail. It's brilliant. A lot of us nail technicians thought of it, so I'm not going to take credit for it, but <laughs> we sort of discovered that along the way, right? That's how we learn this stuff. All us pros that you guys are getting information from, we've learned it because we've done it. We've, we've messed up, we improved it, we perfected it, and now we're sharing it. Okay, so bear with me. I'm going to go ahead and wrap all the other fingers, and then we will wait. <laughs> Oh, 
this is still nice and warm. You just sit it in a bottle of hot water. That worked really well. Now, you can actually buy these already cut up and made in the right shape that you need. But if you don't have them, tinfoil works. Tuck it in. Much easier to do it on somebody else, but you can do it. Oh yeah, that's snuggly. I hate this. <laughs> I appreciate it. I understand why we're supposed to do it. But I could have had half of them filed off by now. But we are doing this because you might not have an e-file, right? And you have a lot of experience with e-files. That's right? just it, you guys. I mean, I don't want to try, I try not to sound like a e-file snob. I love acetone. I use it. Actually, I, I do use it. I use it to remove nail polish. I find it just lickety split takes it off. You just wipe it off. Really that nail polish, right? And I use it to clean products like when acrylic gets around everywhere it's really effective for cleaning up and if you ever get acrylic stuck in your brush I mean I've been doing it long enough I don't do that very often okay so now I'm going to do the pinky the last finger it's funny I was so organized a minute ago and now I'm just like ah slap it on so that's where I'm at right now with this stupid tinfoil I had a nice piece of remember I was kind of organized with the size and, and now I don't care just grabbing a piece and wrapping it around so Now we wait. Okay, so this is where I think most of us who are soaking off like this, if we make any mistakes, this is the troubleshooting side of things. We end up taking it off within about 10 minutes. And ideally, it's supposed to have soaked in enough that it literally just flakes off. You could just take a cuticle stick and just encourage it and get it all off. But what happens is if there's last little bits on there, Whoever's doing it gets a little frustrated and you end up scraping the rest of it off. That's where the damage can come in. And we just don't want to do that. So if you, and we'll see what happens here. Oh, Carmen, do you have a clock? Start a clock. Um, I'm not that organized. So just look at me phone. I'll, I'll just do that. Look, just look at me phone. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to count 10 minutes. So if you do do that where 10 minutes is up and you look at it and it's not coming off and just by a gentle little flaking, that means the acetone hasn't soaked in there enough. You want to maybe put a little more acetone in there, wrap it back up, or maybe you've missed a little spot with the file. You could just do that a little bit, wrap it back up, add a little more acetone, wrap it back up, and just wait another few more minutes until it does what you want it to do. That's how this works. If I was doing a client in the salon, I would have two stations. So when the client came in and I knew it was going to be a soak off because I'm going to put a new one on or they just want to soak off, I can set them up at that station and I can still continue doing my other client or prepping another client. That's what I would do because I just can't stand, stand around for 10, 15 minutes waiting. However, if you don't have something to fill that with, now's the time where you could talk to the client, get to know them a little bit. Or maybe they just want to surf on their phone or give them a magazine. Do people read magazines anymore? <laughs> if they're in a salon, I imagine. There's yeah, still there's the paper's there, there and they're just like sitting the there. the doctor's office, they always yeah, have magazines there. Yeah, right. Well, I'm going to pause and we'll come back when it's ready. It's been 11 minutes. Okay, now the thumb and the index, well, because they're the first ones I did, they might be a little longer because I was fumbling with the other one. So let's take the thumb off and see where we're at. Oh, <laughs> look at it. So the longer it's in the air, the more it will harden it back up again. So you kind of want to see if it's, and it's actually flaking off really gently. I'm not scraping at all. I mean, wooden sticks are not something that's really, you know, because it's wood, it's so soft anyway. So that's actually coming off not too bad, but I am going to do it a little bit longer to see the diff. Now, I will say there is a chance that the thumb, well, let's take the index off. There's a chance that the thumb might not have had the cotton soaking directly on top because I had it on an angle and all the acetone might have run to the side a bit. That might have happened. So let's check the index because that probably didn't happen for the index. Yeah, this might be a little bit more flaky offy. <laughs> yeah. But still, if this is a natural nail, I would have to scrape a little bit. So in my opinion, there's not quite enough. 
So which one was the thumb? This was the index, wasn't it? So I am going to literally, I'm just going to pour a little acetone in there and just soak up that cotton pad again and place it back on top of there. And I'm going to do the same for the thumb. Now, having said that, will the other ones need it? Possibly. Doesn't hurt. I'm just sitting around waiting anyway. And after you do this more and more and more, you will get better and you'll start to learn these right amounts and the right angles that you need to hold that. It's a rather messy procedure, isn't it? Filing is too, I will be honest with you. You got gel flying everywhere but it's much, much faster. Okay, so I do need to do a video about allergies and whatnot, but I will say just as a side note for this particular procedure, if you are filing off gel polish constantly, that is fine if the polish, gel polish originally was cured properly upon application. And the reasons why it might not be cured properly, if you might be using the wrong lamp to match the gel polish. These things are very chemically based and they are meant to be working together. That's why I'm a stickler for wanting to use the same lamp that was created by the gel polish or that the manufacturer has recommended which lamp to use to go with their gel polish. If you are using a totally different lamp and a totally different gel polish and you don't know if they're meant to go together, they might not be meant to go together or you might have improperly cured gel on your nails. And when you file it off, it's now on your skin. If you do that over and over and over and over, you can develop an allergy to it. So that's why this is better for that sense. If you're not sure if your lamp and your gel is compatible, this might be a better alternative. A little way you can get around it. You could put a glove on and just cut the tips of the fingers out so that when you are filing, and the technician wears gloves, or if yourself wearing gloves, you're getting the filings over top of a glove and it's not actually touching your skin. That could work too. The things we're learning, right? Gel has been a new product on the market for the past 20 years, I guess, as far as the gel soak-offs, right? Which is an amazing invention, but there's things that we have to remember. This is a chemical that we're working with. We wanna make sure that we're doing it safely. And this is a safe way to go. All righty. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, I'm not going to make you sit here and wait. Let's give it another three or four minutes. Okay. Okay. So let's take off this. Oh yeah. Look at that. Okay. So I'm, you know what? My thumb is a bit wider than this. It's kind of smaller. It'll get it done faster. Okay. So I'm just using my finger because it's got a wider shovel, you might say. What about on that channel? Is that a good idea to scrape As it? long as you do it gently. I wouldn't do it like you're scraping. So this, you could use this gently. You can use the wooden. Wooden is nice because it is soft. But it's drying up again because we've been talking. Now, as you can see, because these are, you can see it did crumble and it flakes right off. That's what you want to do. So if it's not flaking off of your natural nails, put it back on until it gently flakes off. Now, what it's doing right now is it's now starting to soak into my acrylic. That's how this stuff works. Acetone is actually so effective. You literally could put, it's, it's similar to this. You could take a big bucket of water, take a paper towel and shove it into a bucket of water and the water will bloat out into the paper towel and eventually the paper towel will fall off of the cardboard tube, right? That's the same way that the acetone works for the acrylic that's on the natural nail. So the natural nail is the cardboard tube and the acrylic is the paper towel all around it. And the water is the acetone. When you soak it in, it bloats it up and then it falls off. It's exactly what's happening with the soak off gel. Same thing. Okay, so here we go. It just flakes off. Now, if you're doing this again on your natural nail, just make sure you use a cuticle stick. If you use a metal cuticle stick, just do it gently. Don't press so you're scraping that to natural nail too hard. Now, remember, 
It can take a little bit of scraping because we use it to remove the cuticle off of the natural nail plate before we put the gel polish on. So a little bit of scraping, but just don't rub it so you're actually rubbing into the natural nail. If you do it once or twice, okay. But if you're doing this on a regular basis and you're scraping the natural nail, you could really break it down. You just don't want to do that. So there we go. This one I caught this before. It's really diving into the acrylic too much. Okay, so of course these look ugly because we were doing a removal. This wasn't a beauty video. This was just getting some, you know, business done. Okay, so now you want to get a gentle file. Either one of these will do. And you want to just gently buff off the last little bits. But make sure you're using a gentle file. You don't want to use the coarse or the medium files at all. You can use a fine file, like a 240 grit and above would be great. There you go. Okay, well, this was a messy situation. Again, <laughs> I would file it off simply because I have the skills, but this is another way to get the gel off. And look at this one, it left it on so long, it's breaking down the acrylic. See how easily it's taking off the acrylic too? And I'm not scraping it hard at all. There's no pressure whatsoever. You can see I'm just removing the flaked stuff. Awesome. Well, we almost put ourselves into a video of removing acrylic via acetone. So you can see if you went a little bit longer, you will be able to soak off your acrylic too. Awesome, okay, well, it's a bit messy. I'm gonna clean them up, but thanks for joining me. That's how you, oh, I've got another one to go. That's how you soak off your gel polish. Thanks for joining me, guys. Catch you in the next video.